Welcome to season four of the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom, where we discuss business agility through customer experience, employee experience, and digital transformation. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom. The Agile World Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to techsystems.com. To read more about the topics discussed on this show, you can go to my website at gregkillstrom.com and read my latest articles or get a copy of my latest book, Meaningful Measurement of the Customer Experience, now available on Amazon and other retailers. My name is Greg Kilstrom, and I'm the host of the Agile Brand Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the healthcare customer experience and how customers are shifting their preferences to want better digital experiences. This means that healthcare providers need to keep up with these demands while providing better and more personalized experiences across channels that include both offline and online ones. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome John Nash, Chief Marketing and Strategy Officer at Redpoint, a CX software provider. John, welcome to the show. Hi, Greg. Thanks. I'm excited to be here. I think your focus on agility is key in today's market. It's really a dynamic market environment. Certainly with customer experience, it's really dynamic. So I think your agility focus is great. Wonderful. Well, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to talk, talking about this with you. Um, why don't you start by giving a little background on yourself and, and what you're currently doing at Redpoint? Yeah, sure. You know, I, yeah, I've spent my career helping brands create value for consumers and then ultimately value for themselves through innovative use of data and technology. And you know, I've been fortunate to work with a lot of creative and dynamic companies and people in my career um, with Accenture, I co-founded their CRM line of business, which is all about using data to improve relationships. I led their customer insight practice, which was a cross industry practice. Uh, I led product strategy at FICO, where I really got into advanced analytics. Uh, I co-authored a book with their chief research scientists um, that really got into the power of making automated decisions. And it was fascinating working with him because he was the founder and, and uh, creator of the FICO score. We, uh, we also did some advanced stuff at FICO around AI and machine learning that really applied to both banking and healthcare. And then at Redpoint, you know, I, I help I help our company get our message out to the market and, and come up with the right strategies to, to get there. And our software helps brands personalize engagement with consumers. And it's software that coordinates the data, analytics, and actions, and really working with ambitious market leaders that want to create new dynamic customer experiences, ones that are really competitively differentiated. And we do that across retail banking, travel and hospitality, and healthcare. And there's some interesting learnings kind of across those industries. Uh, But we we are a B2B software company, so it's interesting. The survey that we did with consumers was really to make sure we're at the top of our game in working with the leading brands as they up their experiences with the consumers. And, um, you know, we work with healthcare across all parts of the ecosystem. Uh, It comes from payers to wellness to proactive care to post-care treatment and really engaging with consumers across that life cycle to become more personalized and, and ultimately deliver better outcomes. Wonderful. Well, yeah, l- looking forward to talking talking through this uh, with you. And as you mentioned, Redpoint recently revealed the results of research conducted uh, in November 2021, including a survey of more than 1,000 U.S. consumers that shows that most, uh, about 80%, prefer to use digital channels to communicate with healthcare providers and brands at least some of the time, and 44% prefer digital communications the majority of the time. So from your perspective, are healthcare providers and brands set up to deliver on this at the current time? And and for those that aren't, uh, what should they be doing in order to better meet these demands? Yeah, I think, you know, most were not ready. I think most were caught off guard. If I look at, you know, in 2020, there was about a 10 year acceleration of digital transformation in healthcare in particular. Uh, in 2021, that just continued. So it, the market was moving way faster than people were prepared for. To get ready, I think there's some that were more ready than others if they had digitized their content or if they were focused on a, a more holistic value-based care in the whole value chain of healthcare or if they had telehealth in place. But really, um, there is, we work with a number of companies to really get ready and to really accelerate their, their development of digital transformation. And it really starts with rethinking the customer experience in terms of triple aim in healthcare, which triple aim is better healthcare outcomes, lower costs, and better consumer satisfaction. So those are sometimes at odds, but there are really ways to get all three of them. And it's it's now possible to do all three of them. And we worked with one of the largest payers 
uh, to look at their new member acquisition programs for both Medicare and individual markets. And they were able to grow their member base 25% while also decreasing their operating expenses 25%. So, and a lot of that decrease in operating expenses was shifting things to digital channels and creating a holistic experience. It's kind of interesting in healthcare. The other thing to, to get ready is to really look at your experience holistically across the ecosystem and across customer journey stages. So there's some parallels to the travel industry um, where they look at, you know, for them, it's not a visit, it's a trip. So pre-trip, trip, post-trip. And, and they, in the travel industry has probably led healthcare in this in terms of looking at the granularity of their customer segments, the personas they're dealing with, the journey stages, and then creating these personalized omnichannel experiences. And just like in, in travels also delivered higher revenue with lower costs, healthcare is doing that too now. They're a little bit further behind in terms of granularity goes um, and measuring the impact on triple aim, but they're certainly on the right path. The research also showed that 66% of consumers would choose a provider based on the ability to communicate in a timely and consistent manner. And over one third, about 34%, uh, were frustrated by limited doctor availability and slow response times. So omni-channel personalization is talked about a lot, but even for larger and more sophisticated organizations, it can often be challenging. With true omni-channel personalization as let's call it the North Star, how can an organization position itself to get there and even incrementally by choosing the right data and other technology platforms? That's a great question. And I think, you know, you hit, you hit the nail on the head with incrementally doing it because it is really, um, this speaks to the whole focus on agility. There's probably three layers I'd, I recommend incrementally building out um, data, analytics and orchestration being the three. And then within each of those, you can increment your way. So with data, say, um, you really want to get to all that's knowable about customers across all identifiers. You can't ho hope to personalize the experience with consumers without that deep understanding of who each individual consumer is. And that means getting all their data across the traditional data, like clinical and claims data, but also demographic data, behavioral data, medical device data, all the data. There's a lot of value in that. So you can increment your way in terms of adding more and more data to get to the use cases and the value you're trying to create. And then on the advanced learning, advanced analytics and machine learning, that's really key to personalize the next best action at an individual basis at scale. So if you're dealing with millions of consumers, there's various ways to increment your way here. You can apply machine learning to do your segmentation or clusters. You can create dynamic, simple next best actions based on events. You can do simple predictive models. You can do next best actions that are more complex across the customer lifecycle and journey stages. So there's ways to increment there in terms of the level of advance that you're they're looking to do. And then the third layer of orchestration is really orchestrating the engagement across all channels. So no matter where the customer shows up, which could be in real time, and it could be a physical or digital channel, you need to, to be able to personalize it. And it's easy to personalize deeply in one channel, but it's not so easy to personalize deeply ac consistently across all channels and in real time. But consumers now expect that. They expect you to keep up with their cadence. Um, the old IT turnarounds of 24 hours to seven days between data being updated just doesn't work anymore. And so you can increment your way on the orchestration by picking off the high value, high value and high volume channels first. Um, do some physical and digital. But pick a foundation where you can do all of the channels over time. And I think too many brands have overinvested in silo channels at the expense of a really great orchestrated experience. All three of those layers, data analytics and orchestration, need to be done to get some value. You can't just get value by doing the data because if you're not actualizing it and baking it into a new customer experience, you can't get the scale unless you use machine learning, et cetera. So you have to do some of each layer, but you can certainly increment within those layers. You kind of touched on this um, at the beginning, but you know, beyond tools and data, what is the mindset of the organization um, that, that you know that they need to have in order to provide great omnichannel CX? Yeah, I think clearly the mindset of being consumer centric is the number one priority. You know, in healthcare, I think Mayo Clinic is a great exemplar of this, of making that consumer centric a reality. Um, and they've done it with their mindset over a hundred years. And I, I, would, I was recently watching a Ken Burns documentary about the Mayo approach. And they had a historian that said, you know, they said that Mayo is proven it's possible to be entrepreneurial, competitive, idealistic, and serve patients individually all at the same time. And that's a great mindset for today's times. 
And if you think about the entrepreneurial dimension, it's being agile, being fast, identifying those high value use cases where you can use a data-driven approach to drive results, being competitive. You know, there's fierce competition for the share of consumer and healthcare. We're competing with retailers, with Amazon, a lot of non-traditional healthcare players, and consumers are picking winners based on the level of personalization. And our surveys have bore that out. Idealistic, you know, triple aim, driving outcomes up and costs down and, and better patient satisfaction don't have to be conflicting objectives. You can drive all three of those uh, without necessarily costing more. So it's, I think it's important to keep our idealistic and opportunistic mind on this and individually. So the technology exists today to do that at scale, both digitally and physically, it's arrived, so embrace it. So if you're consumer centric and you focus on those types of, you know, that kind of mindset around it, you will be successful. Well, also pointing back to the, the research that, um, that, that was mentioned earlier, um, 60% of consumers say it's critical for providers to show how well they understand the individual beyond basic patient data. So to me, you know, this doesn't just mean that consumers want the convenience of being able to access their healthcare providers on their device or medium of choice, but they also want better and more personalized experiences. So how should healthcare providers think in terms of bridging this gap? Because it's not just enough to be on channels. They have to rethink their experience across channels. Yeah, it's interesting. I think there's two fundamental gaps within that gap. One is a strategy to execution gap, yeah. uh, which requires rethinking your customer experience holistically and then putting the right capabilities in place to the right data analytics and orchestration. So people have this great customer strategy in their mind or in their head. <laughs> Brands certainly know what they want to do. They just can't execute it. They don't have the right capabilities in place. So one, one thing to bridge that gap certainly is to get the right capabilities. A second thing is there's a customer understanding gap where you, you really want to know and need to know your customers, but you don't always know them as well as you should. Sunitas is a provider we've worked with that has closed that customer understanding gap and that strategy execution gap really well. Um, Sunitas, if you're not familiar with them, they're a provider system in Florida and Texas, New Jersey, but they believe in whole person care. They're very value-based care focused. Uh, they're working with Lucerna, who's a partner of ours that has, Lucerna has an operating system for value-based care that brings payers and providers together. Um, using our software, um, they deliver, Sinitas delivers highly personalized omnichannel engagement, and they're using that to close care gaps. And so to give you an example, they only get paid on delivering value, so outcomes, because they're value-based care. So they proactively go after closing care gaps, which are things like preventative diagnostics, inoculations, et cetera. And if you remember in 2020, then the first three quarters of that year, people were not going in for diagnostic or preventative care. Uh, they either weren't, they were hesitant to go in or the hospitals actually and, and clinics weren't letting them come in. So there was a huge gap in care gaps that developed over those first three quarters. And Sunitas put a push on in the, in the last quarter of 2020 that they used highly personalized engagement to outreach to consumers to close those care gaps. And they actually closed the gaps they'd set at the beginning of the year for the full year in one quarter's worth of work. Um, and they did this through an omni-channel, data-driven, personalized engagement. They used email, other digital channels, person-to-person -person phone calls. And it was really highly tailored to an individual's channel preferences, their language preferences, where their location was, and matching that up against clinic scheduling availability for the procedure they needed. Um, their preferences for a male or female doctor, which sounds like a simple thing, but it has a huge driver on accepting or, or scheduling an appointment. Um, and you can tailor messages and images based on those preferences. And they uncovered some of this through A-B testing. And they also did some surveys to really, and they did a highly personalized surveys that got a high completion rate. So they were able to get this, these care gaps closed, which obviously have a huge impact on outcomes for consumers and lower costs over time. So, and that's, you know, we're, do, we're doing that with Sanitas. We're also doing that same type of thing with one of the top 10 provider systems in the U.S. So it scales, it scales up there as well. So how does an organization measure and understand how well it's understanding its customers? You know, so there's, you know, there's, there's those metrics that, that measure what a customer does, but you know, how does an organization ensure it's meeting both current customer expectations as well as those expectations that will certainly change as the industry evolves or, or other things evolve. So, you know, how, do, how does, how does an organization ensure it's staying one step ahead? 
That's a great question. I like the question. It's kind of the metadata question. Exactly. <laughs> How do I understand the data about my data? So whatever you think it is, you're probably worse off. Um, and I know there was some there's some HBR research uh, that said that 95% of people think they're self-aware, but only 10 to 15% are truly self-aware. And I think that similarly, healthcare organizations don't know what they don't know. So it's really hard to figure out if you're at that level of measuring and, and understanding that you need to be. But there are some practical questions you can ask uh, that really help you uncover what you what you what your awareness level might be. Um, and one of those questions is: Do you have all the data? Are you bringing together clinical claims, consumer demographics, behavioral data, et cetera? A second question is: uh, Do you have the data that moves the needle? So you want to influence consumers to do things like close care gaps, but do you have the data that actually helps with that part of the journey or that that particular outcome? Um, do you have data that keeps up with the customer in the customer's cadence, which could be real time or it could be a five minute window or a day window, whatever that cadence might be. And another good, good question to ask yourself is, do you have data accessible across all channels? You know, if your behavioral data is stuck in your web channel, it's not very helpful to an omnichannel customer experience, which is true for most, most businesses out there. Um, and then, and then are you able to resolve identities across channels? So consumers use email identities, social handles, phone numbers, patient numbers, member numbers any number of things, cookies, there could be lots of different ways to identify a customer. And if you're not able to identify them accurately as they move across channels, you really end up with a very fragmented and, and friction, uh, a customer experience full of friction. So I think the only, the other thing I'd mention there is, um, you know, be open to new measurements too. So we were working with 1-800-CONTACTS um, or 1-800-CONTACTS and they provide you know virtual contacts, but they also they had a really uptick in their business around virtual visits and and prescriptions, and they they found that they were engaging with consumers more in the call center than they were before 2020, and they were okay with that. They had some metrics to you know shorten call times, but they actually consumers wanted that personalized interaction and real with a real person, and so they were adjusted some of their metrics to allow for greater greater call times, but it ended up having a good impact on their bottom line in terms of revenue growth. They were also open to new new segments. Because they were, took a very data-driven approach, they discovered new segments of consumers that were buying contacts online or through through phone calls that weren't doing it before this this market shift. So that they really used that leverage that data to their benefit. Like some other industries as well, you know, the healthcare industry certainly has a lot of room to improve. Uh, you know, according to the research study referenced earlier, 57% of healthcare consumers think retailers or financial services do a better job at providing personalized omni-channel experiences than healthcare. What effect has the global pandemic had on healthcare delivery and, and patient or customer experience? Has it uh, either accelerated or in, in some cases decelerated any aspects? I think where healthcare is accelerating is in the data area. So healthcare has more data than retailer banking. They're just not using it effectively. So they are accelerating where they have that strength and they're starting to use all their data. Uh, you can look at it another way that you know, 80 to 90% of healthcare outcomes are determined by environment and patient self-care, patient behaviors. So, you know, the care itself is about 10 to 20% of the outcome. So the clinical and claims data, which is typically around the care itself, is only a fraction of the outcomes. You really need those social determinants, uh, demographics, what are the environments? You need the behavioral data, which could be self-reported or could be captured via medical devices or interactions with the web application or website. You know, there's a lot of that behavioral data that's left on the cutting room floor um, but I am, we are seeing healthcare accelerate their use of that, and it really is their best opportunity to accelerate past retail and banking because they have they have a huge advantage in terms of the holistic view of the consumer over their life cycle if they can get it all pulled together. And we are see, we are also seeing this acceleration across the ecosystem, certainly with value based care being an incentive to change the way things are done. You know, certainly you you see a lot of a lot of players in the in the healthcare space. What are what are the leaders in the in the healthcare industry doing to create better and more personalized experiences? That could be an example to some of those that may be a little bit further behind. Some of the leaders are are taking a very focused. They're both putting the right foundation in place and focusing on high value use cases. So they're looking at their care paths, their journeys which ones are high impact, 
uh, what, what are the use cases that are going to drive outcomes higher and costs down? And then what is the data and channels you need to, to drive that? And what cadence do you need it in? And when you pull all that together, you can definitely deliver outsized results. And we have seen leaders do that and across the ecosystem. So everything from, you know, I mentioned payers, but we're working with wellness providers too. So Tivity Health has the, I think the nation's biggest fitness program for seniors, uh, Silver Sneakers. Um, they're very member centric, data driven company. They're focused on higher outcomes with lower costs. And they're really taking an omnichannel personalized approach. And, and they're personalizing things based on the consumer's interests, their needs, and their goals. So it's really a higher level of personalization. And there's you can under, you can kind of guess at all the data that's really underlies someone's interests, needs, and goals. Um, and, and so that that's a great example. And I think the wellness area is one one place that really we should tap into as an industry. Um, we're working with providers. I mentioned uh, we're working with uh, chronic care providers. Uh, we're, we're for them, they've got decades of educational materials that they need to put in the hands of consumers or those consumers or patients' families. And with chronic care, it could start with pre-care. It could start as a when you're in a, a certain phase of care. And also, it could be lifelong education around chronic care for that condition and chronic things that you as, as a consumer should be doing and where, where you're going to help yourself. And so the educational piece on that, we're seeing um, highly personalized and, and, and delivering high benefits. Um, and then I think the last part of the ecosystem, well, I don't know if it's the last part, healthcare is a big ecosystem, uh, but medical devices. And we're seeing that uh, medical device companies are using these personalized engagement to acquire new customers, as well as ensure adherence. So really engaging with them over time to ensure that they're using the medical device as designed, that they're getting the benefit out of it. So those are what some of the advanced uh, leaders are doing. That's great. That's great. Well, one last question before we wrap up here. Uh, what are some first or maybe initial steps that you'd recommend to an organization that is not as far along in customer experience maturity? Where, where should they get started? You know, one thing I'd, I'd recommend is to put a right foundation in place and put a foundation in place that lets your point solutions stay in place. So everybody has point solutions around data and engagement channels. Um, you know, Gartner put together a great framework called the customer healthcare customer engagement or consumer engagement hub. Um, they diagram this out where the data stays in place, the channels stay in place, and you overlay it with this level of data analytics and orchestration. Um, I'd recommend starting there. Um, and, and when you start looking at the data, try to bring all your t data together. You really should be striving for a, a version 3.0 of your single customer view, not a version 1.0. Um, start picking off those high value use cases. Uh, what are the data and analytics and orchestration you need to drive those? And the use cases vary by you know, where you are in the healthcare ecosystem. For, so for payers, you know, we've seen things around uh, acquisition use cases, certainly for Medi Medicare population and individual markets. Um, there's also onboarding use cases, ER diversion programs, retention programs, um, providers. We talked about those care gaps, but there's also proactive appointment setting in general, um, patient education related to the care paths that they're undergoing. Um, in pharmaceutical medical devices, definitely use cases around acquisition and engagement and adherence. So um, that, that's, if you get that right foundation and get those right use cases identified, uh, you can really get good results. Wonderful. Well, John, thanks so much for joining the show. For those listening, what's the best way for them to keep up with what you and Redpoint are doing? You know, probably uh, redpointglobal.com. Uh, and we have a knowledge center that we call the Orchard. So it's evergreen content fits right in with your agile approach here. Uh, a bunch of ebooks and blogs and recent surveys out there, customer stories. Uh, the Gartner Consumer Engagement Hub report is actually out there as well. I think it's right now at the top of that page. Uh, but you could just search on um, Gartner Health within our knowledge center on our website. Um, and so that, that's be the best way. Or you could email me. You know, info at redpointglobal.com. Um, any of those ways are good ways to connect with us. Well, again, I'd like to thank John Nash, Chief Marketing and Strategy Officer at Redpoint for joining the show. Thanks again for listening to The Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom. Talk with you next week. Thanks again for listening to The Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom podcast brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www.theagilebrand.show. 
To get a copy of my latest book, Meaningful Measurement of the Customer Experience, visit my website at gregkillstrom.com. Until next week, stay agile.